Hi, let's talk about collisions. If Carroll had a law of motion, it might state that any moving object will likely, at some point, collide with another object, or a wall, or the ground. In fact, Carroll is onto something. Think about it. Objects and surfaces are interacting all around us in the real world. We need collisions to describe how a racket hits a tennis ball or how a bowling ball smashes through the pins, or even how a spilled cereal hits the table and stops. If objects or surfaces didn't collide or interact in the real world, then they would just pass through each other. Well, the same is true for our JavaScript animations as well. With timers, we are able to animate our objects, but without collisions, these objects will just move through each other and right off the screen. We need to implement collisions in order for our objects to interact with each other and the canvas they sit on. Implementing collisions in your animations can boil down to one key point. Being able to determine the coordinates of your object's perimeter at any moment in time. Let's take a look at an example of a rolling ball. Instead of the ball rolling off the canvas, we want the ball to be able to bounce off the right and left walls. Let's focus on the collision with the right wall to start. As you can see, the key moment here is when the right side of the ball has the same X coordinate as the far right wall, which is the width of the canvas or get width. Imagine the program has already set up a rolling ball, which is stored in the variable ball. Let's determine the coordinate of the right side of the ball and save it into the variable ball right. First, let's get the X coordinate of the ball's anchor point, which is the center. Next, to get the coordinate of the right side of the ball, we need to add the radius of the ball. Now that we know where the right side of the ball is, we want to check if it has reached the right wall. Remember, the right wall has an x coordinate of get width. So let's write if ball right equals get width, then bounce back. The only challenge here is that it will be very rare that the right side of the ball will be exactly equal to the width of the canvas, since it is likely moving more than one pixel at a time. To account for this, we will check to see if the right side of the ball is greater than or equal to get width. This will guarantee at some point this condition will be true. Now that we know the ball has collided with the right wall, how do we tell it to bounce back to the left? Well, let's say the ball is moving 5 to the right, as designated by the value stored in dx. Once it bounces, it will now be moving negative 5 to the left. This is super easy to implement in our code. If the right side of the ball is greater than or equal to the width of the canvas, then let's reverse dx by writing dx equals negative dx. That means if dx was 5 prior to the collision, it will now equal negative 5. Great! We now have a ball that collides with the right wall. We can do the same thing for the left wall as well. Except this time, we will be paying attention to the coordinate of the left side of the ball and the left wall, which has an x coordinate of 0. To get the left side of the ball, we will again start with the x coordinate of the anchor, but this time subtracting the radius of the ball. And similar to before, we want to compare this value to the left side wall, which has an x coordinate of 0. So we say, if the left side of the ball is less than or equal to 0, then bounce back. We implement the bounce the same way as before. If the ball was moving to the left with a value of negative 5, then we just need to take the opposite, positive 5, and store it in our movement variable dx. This results in the same code as before, dx equals negative dx. And voila! We have code that, when nestled into a function, can check to see if a ball has collided with the left or right wall. And if so, it just reverses the motion of the ball. Let's take a look at this program in action in the editor.